and welcome to the One Electron Universe. In the previous video, we did a teardown of a broken LED light. We saw the LED driver components and schematic and fixed the issue that was causing the malfunction. If you have not already watched the video, I would recommend you to watch it. In this video, we will look into the details of how a LED driver works. We will use a free online circuit simulator from Falstad to understand the workings. The link to the simulator is in the description below. If you enjoy this video, please do press the like button and also subscribe to the channel for more such content. The main function of the LED driver that we saw in the last video is to convert AC to DC. The driver does this in two stages. Stage 1 on the left, it converts the incoming alternate current to a pulsating direct current using a full wave bridge rectifier. Stage 2, it takes the rectified D pulsating DC and converts it either to a higher or a lower voltage depending on the LED configuration. The LED could be in series or in a parallel configuration or a combination of both. Let's look at the first stage, a full wave bridge rectifier. What is it? It's basically a circuit that helps achieve the conversion from AC to a pulsating DC. This is what basically the circuit looks like. Let's go over to falset.com to see how the circuit works. Before I start, let's have a quick overview of the simulator. This is a free online analog circuit simulator. The link to this is in the description below. You will not need to install every, anything at all. Everything will run in your browser. You won't even have to log in. I find this tool very useful in helping me understand how various circuits work. It is simple to use and understand and helps visualize how a circuit would behave. The main downside I see is what you see in practice may not work in theory. Yes, you heard it right. This simulator and many others take an idealistic view of components. In real world, the components may not behave as they are supposed to in theory. We will see more of this in future videos. A full wave bridge rectifier is made of four diodes such that the output current can flow only in one direction through the load. The green represents the positive potential and the red represents the negative potential. The yellow dots represent the conventional current which is opposite of the flow of electrons and goes from positive to negative potential. As the input is AC, you will see the top and bottom half of the input circuit alternate between green and red. As the diodes allow current to flow in only one direction, the bridge arrangement can make sure that irrespective of the input direction, the output current always flows only in the same direction. The capacitor here is used as a filter to reduce the ripples on the output current. You can see the simulated oscilloscope outputs on both sides of the circuit. We can change the capacitor value to increase or reduce the ripples on the output load. If you increase the capacitance, you will see that the ripples will go away. Let's increase this to a large number. And as you can see here, the ripples have completely gone. On the other hand, you can remove the capacitance completely to see the actual pulsating DC output of the full wave bridge rectifier. Now, as you can see here, the incoming voltage is around 220 volts AC, which basically means a peak of 311 volts and a, 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 a trough or a bottom of negative 311 volts. The output uh, giving up some a very small loss is around 310 volts DC peak. The VRMS, as you can see, doesn't change much. Now that we have a rectified output, let's see how we can make it suitable for LEDs. The output can be controlled and conditioned in two ways. You can have a constant voltage output or a constant current output or a combination of both. Let's have a look at the constant voltage circuit first. This is a DC to DC buck converter. A buck converter converts a high voltage to a low voltage DC. 
The opposite of this or the other side of this would be the boost converter which converts a low voltage DC to a high voltage DC. The main component of this circuit is this n-channel MOSFET. Let's again switch over to Felstad to see how this works. So this is the circuit. This is the n-channel MOSFET. Now as you can see here that you can control the amount of current flowing through the MOSFET via controlling the voltage between the gate and the source. Here we are going to use a square wave to control the total current that flows out of the MOSFET. So the input is 220 volts DC and let's see how the output looks like. This 1k ohm register is the load that we are running. I start the simulator and as you can see as the input is a square wave the output also is a square wave. Uh, what we see here is of course there is a filter a 1 Henry filter a 1 Henry inductance and a 10 microfarad capacitance in parallel uh, to the load. If we remove this you can actually see how the voltage the output voltage is directly controlled by the square wave input and there you go. Now as you see as this turn green turns green that is as the gate is open the current flows and the output is more or less the same shape and figure as the control voltage. You can increase or decrease the output voltage by changing the duty cycle of the square wave. A duty cycle is nothing but for how long is the square wave high as compared to low. Currently the duty cycle is at 34%. That basically means that in one wave the cycle is on for 33% of the time and off for 67% of the time. Now here you will notice that the output, the max output is still 218 volts. However, the VRMS is 115 volts, which is roughly half of what we need. Now, if you wanted to control the output, you just need to change the duty cycle. You can either do it here, which is uh, using the slider, or you can manually change the rate. So let's, let's see if what happens if we increase it. Now, as you increase the duty cycle, that is as you increase uh, the amount of time that the gate is open, you will notice that the VRMS is climbing up. It's gone from 120 to 160 volts now, right? Similarly, when you reduce the duty cycle to a lower value, the voltage will drop immediately. The function of the filter, which I removed earlier in the circuit, is to smoothen out this output. So this is a constant voltage source. Now let's go back and see a constant current source. A constant current source is a different way of controlling the output. Here we are controlling the current instead of the voltage of the circuit. This is what a basic constant current source looks like. Again, we use an n-channel MOSFET in a different configuration to control the current through the load. The NPN transistor controls the voltage applied to the gate of the MOSFET, controlling the flow of current through it. The current flowing through the 2.7 ohm resistor provides a base voltage to the transistor. When the current through the 2.7 ohm resistor increases, the voltage drop across it increases, applying a higher voltage at the base of the NPN transistor. This in turn reduces the resistance between the collector and the emitter of the transistor and dropping the voltage that's applied to the gate. As the voltage at the gate drops, the current or the resistance of the MOSFET increases and the currents, current through it drops. Uh, let's actually run the simulation and see how it works. So there you go. So now as you can see here, uh, the voltage drop across this resistor is constant, which is a 0.6 volts, which is the voltage which is applied to the base of this transistor. Now, if you were to change the load, let's say if, if, we, were to, if we were to short this, right? Uh, and if you notice here, so even after shorting it, you will notice that the current flow still remains at 227.2 milliampers. Let's go back again. Yeah. And one more. And you can see that even with the load of 390 ohms, uh, the current is 227.2 milliampers. And when you increase it, it still is at 227 milliampers. And that's because as the current through the resistor increases, the voltage drop here increases, which then reduces the parallel resistance to this reducing the voltage here, increases the resistance of the MOSFET. 
MOSFET. The other way around, when the current through this resistor reduces, it increases the resistance of this transistor, basically charging up this capacitor, increasing the voltage at the gate, increasing the current flowing through the MOSFET. So you can design the circuit in such a way that the current flow through the LEDs, irrespective of how many LEDs are there in series, will always remain constant. How and when do you decide if you want to use a constant voltage driver or a constant current driver? Normally, a constant voltage driver is used when you have LEDs in a parallel configuration. What you want to do is you want to make sure the voltage drop across the LEDs remain constant irrespective of the number of LEDs working or not. Similarly, when you have LEDs in series, you will use a constant current source because as you can see here, the voltage may differ across the, uh, the, the whole circuit, but the current through it should always remain the same. Now, let's revisit the schematic of the LED light that we saw in the last video and see how this maps to. This was the schematic that we saw in the last video. And uh, as you can see here, uh, the, uh, this circuit is from right to left. So the MB10F, this is the full wave bridge rectifier. Again, the capacitor which filters out the input to the constant current source. Uh, so it filters out the output from the bridge rectifier to the constant current source. PT4501C is the constant current source chip. And as you can see here, this is the 2.7 volt, uh, 2.7 ohm resistor, which controls the voltage drop across the base transistor in this. Let's in fact go back to Felstad and see how the whole circuit now, which is what this looks like, uh, functions. Uh, now, if I run this, you should notice that we start off with 220 volts AC on the left using the same components that we see in the schematic finally coming down to a constant current of around 225 to 250 amperes milliamperes i'm so sorry coming down to 220 to 250 milliamperes this is what a constant voltage driver would look like as you can see here uh, at the bottom you see the duty cycle of the square wave and the square wave controls the voltage across the LEDs. And here you can see that we have a constant voltage of 2 volts across all the LEDs. And that's it. With this, we come to an end of this video. Hope you enjoyed this. Have a good day. Take care. This is the One Electron Universe.